as you know, every Tesla is designed to be autonomous. So the, it's sometimes difficult to explain to people if they have not, in fact, I'm sure you've all encountered this, where you try to tell people that the Tesla can drive itself and they, they think you're crazy or something. Apart from the Cybertruck, our, our cars look pretty normal. I mean, they're good looking cars, but they don't look super, they, don't, they, don't, they look normal. Let's say you've got a cat and it's like just sitting there on the couch and you try to tell people that the cat uh, can actually, um, it's actually puss in boots and, and, it, and it can actually put on boots and a hat and, uh, and swashbuckle and sing and dance. And people are like, no way, man, that's a cat. Until the cat does all those things. We, we've got, you know, millions of Tesla cars out there that are the, kind of like puss in boots. They're, they're, they're intelligent, but people don't know that they're intelligent. They look like normal cars, but actually they're super smart and can drive themselves. So as, um, I, I think that's probably the single biggest thing we need to do is to educate uh, potential customers that you, you can either have a car, you can either have a cat that's like a normal cat, or you can have Puss in Boots, and Puss in Boots is very cool. <laughs> These days when people come to our stores, um, and, or even people that have the car, haven't turned it on, we find. And sometimes people have paid for FSD, and they haven't turned it on. We're like, what? You should at least try it once. The sales team, the service team will actually sit with customers and say, look, let, let us show you how it works and how easy it is. And then once they've tried it for even just a few days, uh, they, they can't live without it. And, uh, and, and now with uh, version 14, we're actually getting to the point where we almost feel comfortable allowing people to text and drive, which is kind of the killer app. Because that, that's really what people want to do, and, and do do. Actually, you know, the car's a little uh, strict about keeping your eyes on the road. And, uh, but I'm confident that in the next month or two, uh, we should, we, we, we're going to look closely at the safety statistics, but we will allow uh, you to um, text and drive, essentially. It's, it's certainly been the current situation, which often people will actually turn off FSD to text then turn it back on, which is less safe. So yeah, that's probably the, the single biggest thing is, is just get people aware of, of FSD. Um, and then obviously we need to get it approved in, in Europe. So we certainly appreciate the support of our customers in Europe uh, pushing the regulators to approve FSD. Because you, you can't even get a super, even just normal supervised FSD is not allowed in Europe currently, um, which doesn't make any sense. And I've had these like crazy conversations with the regulators that uh, seem like a Franz Kafka novel. Uh, where, where I'm like, well, look, we, we have, you know, billions of kilometers of data that shows that FSD increases safety. And they're like, well, we have to have all these committee meetings. I'm like, yeah, but people's lives are at stake here. So definitely a pressure from our uh, customers in Europe to, to push the regulators to approve would be appreciated. And then we have partial approval in China, and we hopeful, hopefully we'll have uh, full approval in China uh, around February or March or so. That's what, that's what they've told us. Yeah, the, the, the fact that every Tesla car is capable of full self-driving, every car we build and have built for the last several years is capable of uh, full self-driving is, is pretty wild, and most people don't, don't know that. So, um, and then we've got the, the first car that is specifically built for uh, uh, unsupervised full self-driving to, to be a robo-taxi. It's called a Cybercab. It doesn't even have pedals or a steering wheel. Um, yeah, there's no side view mirrors, there's no, uh, yeah, so it's, it's, and, and it's, it's very much optimized to min for, for the lowest cost per mile in, our, in an autonomous mode. That production is happening right here in this factory, and we'll be starting production in April next year. The way that um, CyberCab is designed is, it's, it's, it's designed, uh, obviously, for a purely autonomous world, but also the manufacturing system is... Uh, unlike any other car. Uh, it, the manufacturing system of the CyberCab, uh, it's, it's sort of, it's closer to a high volume consumer electronics device than it is a, a car manufacturing line. So the net result is that I think we should be able to achieve, I think ultimately less than a, a 10 second cycle time, basically a unit every 10 seconds. Uh, maybe ultimately, take a few years to get there, but it's theoretically possible to get to a five second uh, production time. What that would mean is you could get 
on, on, a, on a line that would normally produce, say, 500,000 cars a year at uh, uh, a one-minute cycle time, uh, like Model Y, this would be maybe as much as two or three million, maybe ultimately, theoretically possible to achieve a five million unit production line if you, if you can get to the five second cycle time. These will be everywhere in the future. We want it to look futuristic, so like it changes the look of the road. I think most people here know the safety statistics show that uh, uh, miles driven on FSD are much safer than miles driven with, without it. So uh, what this will translate to ultimately is saving the lives of millions of people uh, and preventing hundreds of millions of accidents. Massive increase in the lives solved and, and tragedies avoided. Uh, it's going to be amazing. And how many people here have tried 14.1? Okay. All right, cool. Um, yeah, you can see that even with the point releases, it's getting quite a bit better. Uh, it should be pretty smooth at this point. Um, but really, 14.2 is... There are major changes to 14.2 and then 14.3. I think by 14.3 is when we'll really be at the point where you can just uh, pretty much fall asleep and wake up at your destination.